Jerry Enzarillo is a tourism and hospitality titan. Previously president of Kersner Entertainment Group, he's now CEO of the Dariagate Development Authority, one of Saudi Arabia's most ambitious tourist developments. Jerry Enzarillo, it's an absolute honour to be talking to you today. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, congratulations on being the CEO of Dariagate. What an exciting job. And can you tell me what Dariagate is? Yeah, this is very special. Lovely to see you. Thank you for taking the time to uh, allow us to have a chance to visit this morning. Um, Derea is the birthplace of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It's the birthplace of the Arabian Peninsula, and it's the home of Al Saud. So Derea is a city, an ancient city, over several hundred years old, that's in the middle of a historic oasis called the Wadi Hanifa. And years ago, people stopped to rest and rejuvenate and to tell stories and to trade. And a city was made out of mud, which had 30,000 people. That is the birthplace of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So um, His Majesty the King, the custodian of the two holy mosques, when he was governor in 1998, started restoring the birthplace of the kingdom. And it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is one of the most beautiful in the world in the middle of the principal city of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So what happened is that when the Kingdom decided to open up for tourism and to prepare the, the Kingdom for tourism, um, a master plan was envisioned to put all the amenities in place where people could come and see where Saudi uh, started. Mm -hmm. And that's when the Derea Gate Development Authority was formulated. The chairman is the Crown Prince. He has a very dynamic vision. He loves the day. They were kind enough to ask me if I would uh, contribute to that, which is uh, a great honor for me. So what will Derea look like to the visitor in 2030? Yeah, this is an amazing question because the intention of the king and the crown prince is that it looks like what it looked like 200, 300 years ago. Wow. Now that's complex. Because if you look at modern uh, tourism destinations where they've replicated things like Las Vegas where you have the pyramids, it, it, whatever they replicate looks fake. But this is the birthplace of the kingdom. So it's not a theme park. So you have to be very authentic. So in our building materials, we're going back to the methodology of two to 300 years ago, which is mud and straw and timber. But now, you have to have buildings that can have superstructure and air conditioning and elevators and uh, physical accessibility ramps. So how do you do that? So you build mm -hmm. um, a modern city underground with sustainability, but then you put the old city above it. But it's gonna look very authentic. The Crown Prince is meticulous in this detail on authenticity, that it looks like what it looked like 200 years ago. So there's gonna be eight museums where are the collections for these museums coming from? What can we visit? What can we see? Because today is the birthplace of the kingdom, um, the, one of the principal features of these concentric master plans that are in Didea is to celebrate culture, heritage, and national origin. So you have some world-class epic museums that are without benchmarking, like you'll have the new House of Al Saud. As you know, museums have gone through a great evolution uh, in years. There is curation, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are storytelling museums now. If you look at the Great African American Museum, the new one in Washington, D.C., even if you look at Yad Vashem in Israel, these are, these are great storytelling museums. Well, His Majesty, uh, the, the King, and the Crown Prince believe in storytelling. So the way we're conceptualizing these museums now, there will be curated um, uh, collections that we're looking at now, but we'll have a museum on the Saudi state and Arabian Peninsula. We'll have the epic museum on House of Al Saud, museums devoted to Arab calligraphy, museums uh, devoted to the national dance of the Arda, a lot of different ways to celebrate the origin of the kingdom because you have to celebrate the past especially when the past is authentic. And as well as the museums, 22 hotels. Will they cater to every budget? Derea is not a theme park. It's the birthplace of the kingdom. So we have to be careful that that jewel, that UNESCO World Heritage Site, 
is not trampled upon. It's not meant for that. So that's why we're putting these concentric circles of amenities. But the amenities are not just the 22 hotels, 19 of which in the first phase, but 100 restaurants, souks, residences, universities. Because the idea is to have people live, learn, visit, recreate, where they can come into this historic city in this thriving Metroplex. The Crown Prince went on TV just a few weeks ago to show a bold plan on how Riyadh will become one of the 10 most important cities in the world, taking Riyadh from 7 million people to 15 to 20 million people mm -hmm. by 2030. You know, all of the educated Saudis are all coming home now. They're very excited about the future. This is a good thing. And going back to hotels for a moment, do we know which hotel brands will be on the ground? Yes. Now, because we just opened the king of the tourism, mm -hmm. we opened up only to 49 countries plus Macau and uh, Hong Kong in September of 2019 mm -hmm. with electronic visas. We, we, we did it as a test rather than open to all 238 countries. We were doing 55,000 electronic visas a week before we had a shutdown for the precautions of COVID in March, right? So we learned a lot from the people that came and we learned what they liked, what they didn't like. Now, because the kingdom is going from 3% of GDP to 10% of GDP in terms of tourism revenue and to get to 100 million tourists, of which Riyadh would have 25 million, right? Um, you need full one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. So the Ministry of Tourism, upgraded by the Crown Prince, fabulous Minister of Tourism, His Excellency Ahmed Al Khatib, Saudi Tourism Authority, they've got a national comprehensive tourism strategy that, that's for the whole kingdom. Didea is meant to be four and five star high-end because it's not meant to have 30, 40 million people go through it. We don't want to trample the birthplace of the kingdom. So our emphasis is more on the high-end luxury side mm -hmm. of which the 30 principal luxury hotel brands of the world have all signed on and then after the uh, June board meeting, which is coming up, we'll start announcing some of those names. And in Saudi in general, what will holidays look like compared to holidays in Europe? The king and the crown prince feel very passionate about returning the kingdom to the pre-1979 moderation that it was known for. They feel very strongly, as do all of us, that the healthiest interaction is to welcome people into the kingdom and to mix with the society. No segregation of local and, and, and tourist areas. They're all homogenous because we know two things and they're, they're stereotypical in some ways. We have to break the stereotype that the kingdom is merely deserts and camels. It is a fabulously beautiful, diverse uh, country. We want everybody to see that. And then the other thing is that the, the Saudis are very warm, generous, and hospitable people. We want that interaction, right? So even in Dereya, its intention is to be one of the great gathering places because we want tolerance, we want inclusion, we want this mixture. So dress code has already been relaxed that came with the visas. Um, if you feel like wearing an abaya, like uh, have fun. A lot of people like wearing the abayas because yeah. it's very fashionable now in, in the kingdom. If you don't, you're not required to. We would ask that people that visit just have cultural sensitivity the same way you would if you went to Japan or uh, other countries that have uh, cultural nuance. We just ask to respect that nuance. Will it be dry? What will happen in terms of dry, we'll see uh, in the years to come what, what comes with that. But there's so much to do in the kingdom that when we, when we interviewed all the people that came to the kingdom, the whole idea about it being dry didn't even come up in the, in the post uh, remarks. What came up was the beauty, the warm welcome, the diversity of things to do. Which interestingly brings me on to my final question. You have moved to Saudi as a hospitality professional. What has that journey been like for you personally and what's it like to live and work in Saudi? It's been one of my, uh, my favorite uh, things because, uh, you know, I've been around a long time now. Um, one of the aspects that came out in the G20 is that if you look at the G20 societies now, 
a lot of them are polarized. A lot of them uh, have a degree of negativity, even though one doesn't want to admit that. But, but a lot of the societies now are polarized. You don't feel that in the kingdom. In the kingdom, it's a very polite society. People are very respectful. It's rare that anybody would ever raise their voice. Maybe a, a Sicilian like me might, but, but it's rare. No one curses, no one beeps their horns. It's very polite, but it's very welcoming. We're a staff of 950 people. The expatriates, which are 20% of my staff, they like the fact that it's polite and that people are kind and people are welcoming. So it's a much different perception than people think uh, what what uh, life is. And when you go to restaurants now, music and you know everybody's sitting at the same tables. I mean, it's it's not what you think it was. So what we say is come visit and see for yourself and make your own mind up. Jerry Anzarello, I'm looking forward to visiting you there. Thank tomorrow. you. Tomorrow. Come tomorrow. <laughs> Only one today, as we say. Only one today. Come visit. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. Yeah.